Florida men's basketball team is still alive and on to the Sweet 16. After a healthy win over Virginia, the Gators jumped all over Norfolk State. Newly acquired running back Reggie Bush even putting it very simple on Twitter this morning, tweeting day one. Starting out on the diamond, the Bulldogs blasted Charleston Southern six home runs on Tuesday night to beat the Bucks 21 to six. But two former Florida Gators are taking to the streets for a different kind of workout. Now for one Bulldog, some community service on a Saturday morning, helping give a family their own front door and place to live hits a lot closer to home. Just hours ago, Tim Tebow was introduced as another quarterback on the New York Jets roster. And while the finish wasn't as frantic, it sure was fun to watch. After a march full of madness, number one Kentucky and number two Kansas square off tonight. With the lockout over and the chaos of free agency, you can bet that these players were ready to get back to work on the field. Thanks, Kelly. And before we leave you tonight, here's something you probably shouldn't try at home. This is David Cannonball Smith. You'll find Dave sitting right here Row one, seat two. And after an 18 game hiatus with a fractured foot, Tyler Griffin returned to action last Wednesday against CSU. You guys excited for March Madness? You got your brackets filled out? It's open to the public, free parking and admission. Melissa Egan, NBC Miami. That'll do it for sports. I'm Melissa Egan. We'll be back right after this. For Olympic swimmers, it's no surprise most of their time is spent in the pool perfecting their skills. But two former Florida Gators are taking to the streets for a different kind of workout. For Ryan Lochte and Connor Dwyer, Matt Delancey's non-traditional training is key as they prepare for the U.S. Olympic trials in June. What's so great about working with him is he finds different things to make you better. For Delancey, Lochte and Dwyer aren't swimmers when they step out of the pool. Categorize athletes in two categories, hunters and farmers. Hunters are athletes that need a lot of variety. You know, they get bored, so they need a ton of variety. Farmers are kids that need consistency. It doesn't matter which one you are as long as you know which one you are. Lochte, a hunter, and in Delancey's eyes, a rare breed from Florida. One in every seven or eight years, you get a kid like that that combines that much talent with that much ability to work hard. He's always looking for an edge on his competition. So that's why he's not afraid to come out here and flip a tire, drag a chain, lift something awkward over his head. I mean, it's for him, it's all about his swim performance. Lochte has been training with Delancey for about 10 years, Dwyer around two and a half, dragging 525 pound chains, giving them that edge on their competition. Or whatever you do in training should be harder. I like that a, lot. a little bit more uncomfortable. A lot of athletes wonder like what we do and because it's not typically what swimmers do for lifting. So. Uh, yeah, they're asking what are we doing and some of it we keep a secret, some of it we'll, we'll tell them. What's no secret now is just how tough we'll these workouts can be. <laughs> work it up. I think we're going to have you do singles today. We'll do singles. That's all right. That's okay. It's brutal. Uh, he definitely knows how to push an athlete and I mean he's a great coach. Uh, he's been there through my swimming career and he's just helped me get a lot stronger. And I want to be the same athlete I am today if it wasn't with him. He's got his sunglasses on. He looks like the world's strongest man right now. <laughs> then he's looking good. He's, he's a hardworking, dedicated guy, and he really likes uh, giving all his effort to his athletes, so he's a great coach. Locked in Dwyer just going through the pain to stand out in the pool of competition in June. For Gator Vision, I'm Melissa Egan. The Citadel football team is working hard this summer, not only in the weight room, but also in the community. We are here helping, you know, Habitat for Humanity. Got some teammates out here helping someone build a house, helping wherever we can, digging some holes, drilling some holes, doing it all. About right here. She went all the way down. For the third consecutive year, the Bulldogs lending a hand to Charleston's Habitat for Humanity, this year building houses on James Island. Great opportunity for our guys. Tremendous experience, not only in what they do for the community, but uh, just growing as a football team closer together. I've got a number of jobs. I'm kind of a grunt man today. I've been doing a lot of shoveling. Uh, I've also been measuring just a little bit, but mostly grunting sand from one spot to another. Now for one Bulldog, some community service on a Saturday morning, helping give a family their own front door and place to live. It's a lot closer to home. I mean, I just remember when we first got our rooms and everybody was excited um, choosing what paint to paint the walls and just like little things like that that go a long way. The nonprofit organization provided defensive back Sadat Jean Pierre and his family more than just a place to call home growing up in Immokalee, Florida. 
it gives you a brand new start really it's refreshing for people who might be in like small apartments and just different kind of scenarios in life these affordable homes will be sold to qualified families at no profit with no interest charged the bulldogs helping fulfill the vision of a world where everyone has a decent place to live and just like a Saturday in the fall at Johnson Haygood Stadium, a building site no different, and there's always time for some football. I love being with these guys. We've got a great group of players. Everybody's excited about the 2013 season. We spend a lot of time here just getting on one another and uh, talking about the season and what they're doing and what they're not doing. Talk about seven-on-sevens in the summertime, so it is a fun time. Melissa Egan, CitadelSports.com. After four months of the NFL lockout and in the middle of the free agency frenzy, the Miami Dolphins finally getting back on the field for day one of training camp. You know, it's exciting to be back out here, see the fans out here and um, getting back together in team meetings and just going over plays and coming out here running around and it's exciting. And with the fans in the stands just as excited to be back as the players were, there seemed to be more interest in who wasn't on the field than who was. It's a little bit of an emotional roller coaster, but at the end of the day, uh, I know this is a great opportunity for me to make a difference and uh, do something special here and hopefully help this organization turn things around. The former New Orleans Saint and Heisman winner is coming to Miami, hopefully bringing what the Dolphins have been missing on the field with him. Excitement, you know, explosion, and um, that's one of the things we want to uh, step up this year is uh, being more explosive and uh, having an attack, a attacking mindset and uh, going after defenses. So uh, it's, it's an exciting move for us. Bush can't practice until the NFLPA is reinstated as a union next Thursday, but he's already set to prove the critics wrong. I wear my heart on my sleeve, you know, so I'm one of those guys who always feels like he has something to prove year in and year out. And uh, but more so now coming to a new organization and uh, getting an opportunity to be that feature back. I feel like, uh, you know, there's, a, there's an even bigger chip on my shoulder. Now, before the players got on the field this morning, Miami Dolphins owner Stephen Ross came out and spoke to the media. He talked about quarterback Chad Henney, running back Reggie Bush, and even put head coach Tony Sperano on the hot seat a little bit, talking about the pressure to win this season. You listen to their talk radio shows. You can hear all the pressure. You know, it's, does it necessary have to come from me? No. It's, I mean, he can feel it by everybody. With Coach Sperano heading into his fourth season with the Finns, Ross says the urgency for some postseason action is at its highest. And coming off back-to-back -back seven and nine seasons, Ross is looking for a big change. What I'm looking to do is build a, a team that is consistent, that has a, a, a staff that's there, that's dedicated to winning, and can win. And I think, you know, when Miami had that, they always had a great, they had a, you know, consistent winning teams. And that's what I want to bring to Miami, you know, and I want to be in the Super Bowl. Melissa Egan, NBC Miami. You know, they're a great program. They'll bounce back tomorrow. And with Pegler going, they're, they're probably uh, having an advantage. Uh, talking about the game tomorrow, it would be nice to get a three-game sweep over the Cougars before hitting the road for UNCG and then SoCon Tournament. Well, no, no doubt about it. You know, we, we would like to accomplish that tomorrow, but we just need to focus on trying to win in the first inning. And uh, what does Austin Mace have to do tomorrow on the mound? Uh, what do you hope to see out of him? He's got to throw strikes, and, and uh, uh, then we got to play defense behind him. He's kind of been hard luck Harry out there the last couple weekends, and we got to play defense behind him. And senior day tomorrow for a couple of the guys. Are you going to feel a little emotion out there? Yeah, it's, you know, every senior day is special to watch these guys come in as, you know, young, young men and uh, leave as a grown man. We're very proud.